What's up everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I'm going to show you how to make a Saber Altar build. She's a character from the Fate series. Saber Altar is an awesome character in the Fate series. She's fan favorite not only because she is like the corrupted version of Saber aka King Arthur, but she's extremely strong and she just looks freaking awesome. But this build is based around her and her abilities, so she uses Excalibur as a weapon and her special attack looks a lot like the Ash of War for the Blasphemous Blade, so that's what we're going to use for this build. So it's mainly going to be a strength and faith build, but because just doing a melee build with that weapon would be boring, so we're going to use buffs and we're going to use some talismans that will help keep these buffs longer on our character. So we'll be doing a massive, massive amount of damage with the Ash of War with all of these buffs. So it's sort of a mix between a tank that has a high damage output where we'll be stacking a lot of buffs together. Some enemies will be resistant, of course, because it does a fire damage. As you can see with uh, the gargoyle fight, it wasn't doing a ton of damage, but I also was not using Alexander's shard, I switched it out after. But on most fleshy enemies, it definitely will do a ton of damage. So the build stats, as you can imagine, will look something like a lot of vigor, um, some mind, low endurance, a lot of strength, and a lot of faith. So strength and faith will be our primary damage stats. But you want to put more points into faith because the Blasphemous Blade has a B rating in faith and a C rating in strength, or I think it's D actually. I have 50 Vigor, 30 Mind, 25 Endurance, uh, 70 Strength, 15 Dexterity to be able to use uh, the Blasphemous Blade, and 80 Faith. 80 Faith is basically like the cap, so I wouldn't go higher than that for a build like this. You can also do this like a lower level as soon as you get the blade. Obviously your stats won't look exactly like this, but you can still use these stats as a guide. Now Dragon's Bolt Blessing, we're gonna use that because Saber is really good at deflecting hits with her sword. And basically the blessing will allow you to do that in a way because it will make one-handed hits bounce off of you when you have that buff active. And speaking of buffs, Golden Vow and Flame and Grant Me Strength do stack together. So now that you've seen what this build can do, I'll show you exactly where to get all the items you'll need to make it. The outfit I chose is a Malekith's armor set, altered, but you can also use the Altered the Knight's Cavalry set, which uh, you can get in the Consecrated Snowfield. I have a video if you don't know how to get it. And Malekith's armor set you get from defeating him. You can buy it at Round Table Hold after. The Blasphemous Blade we're going to use because it has the most saber-like Ash of War, which resembles her Excalibur Morgan. Now you can get this blade after you defeat Rykard, you can go buy it with his Remembrance at Round Table Hold. And for the seal, we're going to be using Earth Tree Seal, we need to go to Volcano Manor. You want to take the Prison Town Church Side of Grace and you can follow me from that point on. And you will find the seal on his body. For the first buff incantation, we'll be using Flame Grant Me Strength. You want to come to Fort Gale North, Side of Grace, and Caled, and just follow me. For Golden Vow, you want to come to the Volcano Manor area in the Altus Plateau. You want to take the Bridge of Iniquity side of Grace and just make your way down here to the right and in that shack, you'll be able to loot Golden Vow. Now if it's the first time you go there, you'll have to fight an NPC, but other than that, it's super easy to get. For the second Flame Incantation, Flame Cleanse Me, you want to come to Lyurnia of the Lakes near the Church of the Vow. There will be a Flame Monk camp right in this area, 
So you want to go there and you'll be able to loot that spell. For the last spell we're using Dragon Bolt Blessing. It's totally optional but uh, you can find it at the Storm Color Church in the Altus Plateau. So it's right up here. Uh, you can use this rampart side path, side of grace to get up here. Once you enter through the front of the church, there will be a chest to your right behind a wall, like right here, and that's where you'll be able to get that spell. For the wondrous physic mix, you actually want to use the flame of shrouding crack here because the ash of war of the blasphemous blade does fire damage. So instead of doing around 1400 damage uh, with the ash of war, you'll be doing around 1700 with that boost. So it's going to be super good when we combine all of our buffs as well as this wondrous mix when you're fighting a boss to get some really really juicy damage out of it. To get that specific crack tier uh, you want to go to Kaelith and fight the minor earth tree right in this area here. So you can take this uh, rod view balcony side of grace, come down here and fight them. Let's now look through the talismans we'll be using for this build. Now as I said it's kind of tanky and it's based on the buffs but we also want to be doing the most damage out of the Ash of War. So to do that we'll be using the Shard of Alexander which you can get at the very end of Alexander's questline. Now if you follow his questline eventually you'll meet him in the uh, crumbling Ferrum. So you want to make your way to the Dragon Temple Lift and once you get here you want to travel right onto some rubble and you'll be able to fight him in this area right here. If you haven't advanced this questline up to that point be mindful that there will be a dragon there you need to fight but if you advance this quest line, the dragon will not be there. The Carrion Filigreed quest will help with the FP consumption when using our Ash of War because that's what we'll be using most because that's what Saber Altar does. She excalibers you in the face over and over again. But the Carrion Filigreed quest is pretty easy. You can buy it off an NPC after you've started either Blade or Ronnie's quest line. So he will be at the road to the manor side of Grace. Uh, he will be like right here. Once you teleport there, you can just talk to him and buy it off of him. I think it's around 4,000 runes to buy it. Now for protection, we'll be using the Dragon Crest, a Great Shield, the Talisman, because Saber can tank a lot of damage and it's just gonna help overall. So the Great Shield Talisman is found in the secret Halic Tree area. Uh, you want to take the Drainage Channel side of Grace and then follow me. And once you fight all the enemies, the talisman will be in this chest. The last talisman we'll be using is Old Lord's Talisman. That talisman will make it so that our buffs will actually last longer, which is really good, especially for boss fights, so we won't have to continuously use our buffs and use FP instead of using that FP to do damage with our Ash of War. Now you want to make your way to the Crumbling Ephraim. Once you get here, you want to take the Beside the Great Bridge side of Grace. And I'll show you where to go from here. Now once you get here, you want to take the ladder down, there will be an NPC summon you need to fight. And uh, don't go too far in because there's like three big enemies um, in that building. So you want to wait until the summon pops up right here and then you fight him here.
Once you defeat them, you will be able to loot a talisman inside of that chest. So that's everything for this build. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want more Elden Ring videos, there are plenty more on my channel. I have a lot more builds as well. So have yourself a wonderful day, everyone, and I'll see you all very soon.